So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today I'll be the first speaker of the proposition in uh, debating our motion for today. This House believes that drinking water should be a human right. Well, firstly, let's start by clarifying a few things about our motion. Firstly, what is the nature of a human right? What is a human right? What do we understand by this concept? Well, a human right is an is an inalienable fundamental benefit which a person uh, is inherently entitled to only by only by being a human it is something that any human is entitled to and must uh, um, uh, must be provided for him so um, also, let's uh, start by talking about the r what characteristics of a right, a human right, what makes a right a human right, what makes a benefit a human right, what does it differentiate uh, a benefit from a human right. Well, there are two characteristics that do this. Firstly, universality, that is, uh, that everybody should, uh, every, every person, every human in the world should be uh, entitled to this uh, to this benefit, to this right, and um, that he should be provided this right and be entitled to it. And secondly, e equality, egal egality, that every uh, person should um, should get this right, and uh, there should there should be an equal um, equal uh, distribution of this right. Now. Let's uh, let's talk about a little a little Sorry. bit about no thank you a little bit about the consequences of m making um, drinking water a human right. Firstly, if we make drink uh, drinking water a human right, we um, assure ourselves that any state in this world can be held responsible for providing water to its citizens. Sorry. That means no thank you. That means. Um, that you can um, you can demand uh, this right. You can demand the the um, um, that this right is provided by your state. You can demand that uh, your state must provide this right, and uh, in uh, the other case, it must receive punitive measures. So, also, um, what does it mean? Um, what does it mean if we make, what consequences do we have if we make uh, drinking water a human right? We also have uh, that if, the fact that if we uh, do the, if we implement this decision of making drinking water a human right, we will make it an asset. What does uh, this mean? We will make it um, a benefit for these people. And what kind of benefit? A benefit that cannot be owned nor sold. This is a very important point in our debate. This benefit is something that m every person must get and it must and they must get it freely Sir. and equally no thank you uh, for uh, I would give an example here about a uh, right uh, about an asset that cannot be neither owned nor sold air for example we breathe air right this is an uh, also an asset this is something that cannot be owned nor sold no thank you now uh, let's continue by uh, thinking about the fact about why do we consider that water satisfies the, con the conditions that we have um, told you about? Why does water deserve to be, put, to be a human right? Well, firstly, um, it's the argument that um, water is uh, vital to life. It is a benefit, it is something, it is an object, it is something that is vital to life. We cannot live without it. And this links it directly to the uh, right uh, to life. So today we say that be because this right is, uh, Please, because sir. this benefit, uh, yes. So because the right to life is already guaranteed by the declaration, it is respected everywhere? Um, yes, but no, no. The answer is no, but... We say by implementing today's motion that we will guarantee something that consists, uh, that um, um, enters this right of life. We will guarantee the right of, to drinking water that is essential in uh, the right to life. Now, our second point is uh, about why do we consider we should make drinking water a human right, is the fact that this is a common good. This is a common good for everybody in a state. We must, not, um, we must not isolate someone from this common good. This is a common good of the population. Continuing, um, I would like to talk a bit about the fact that um, also water, drink, water and, uh, of course, uh, derived from this drinking water, Water is a natural resources, resource, and natural resources are owned by 
states. They are owned by states and they must be, um, they must be um, used by states. And by implementing today's uh, motion, we say that states must um, use these, uh, this natural resource to, and provide its people with it. So um, wh what, what do we mean by this fact that it is a natural resource? We mean that it cannot oh, be privatized. No, thank you. It, we mean that it cannot be privatized, that it ca cannot enter private hands. Okay, now I'd like to uh, enter a very important point in my uh, um, speech today, the disadvantages of not making water um, a human right like the opposition will support today. Well, the disadvantages, firstly, if we do not make water a human right, that directly means that water can be privatized. That directly means that water can enter private hands. What does that mean? That means that companies can come and use water as a... Um, as a asset, if you want, as an object that would help them gain profit, that would help them uh, gain money. And uh, of course, because it can be, uh, it, because Sir. it entered one of you, but you. Uh, how come, can you explain us more, how can you by making it a human right automatically, automatically ban uh, privatization? Well, we're talking uh, about the fact today that if we make it a human right, then it is free. It is free and private privatization means that people will pay money for that right and that is not uh, that is not that not that does not enter enter in the definition of a human right do you pay for life i no you do not and um, so it must not enter private hands as i was saying the disadvantages of making water a human right firstly I said that uh, it can be privatized, it can enter private hands, a company can use it to make profit to uh, take money. Where if a, if a company can use it to make profit and to uh, make money, it means that it can uh, rise its price. It means that the, the price of water can be raised to any, um, any uh, coat. So what does that mean? Well, um, let's think about the fact that uh, um, two out of three persons, that uh, person, two out of three persons that need water, that are in, in, in a need, in a desperate need for water, have an, uh, an income, have, um, get two dollars per day. That means that these people that n desperately need water, for example, a good example in this case are African, are people from uh, the African continent, have an income, have a uh, get two dollars per day well in this situation how can we say that we can privatize water how can we say that water should not be free that it should not be a human right so uh also i would like okay so i've talked about the fact that uh, about disadvantages and why sh we should make drinking water a human right and the, m uh, the motives that uh, uh help us here and my colleague will, will talk about accountability thank you What the side of proposition is offering you today is an ideal world. It's something magic. It's idealistic. It's something, oh, we can have water because it's a human right and it's vital. I'm here to say to you that this is being hypocrite and this is uh, called being uh, that everything that's free, that water is not here to be uh, free and I will prove to you through my points. Okay, first I'm going to do the rebuttal of what was said and then I will present you the first argument uh, which is uh, hypocrisy. So to start, first of all to clear things up. UN has defined water as human right in status quo on the 28th of July 2010, so that is just um, the, so that we can have um, an idea of what is happening. So another thing is, um, they say uh, that um, in their first, and then I will move to definitions. First of all, uh, must be provided to everyone water. And we agree that the, hu the human right is something that should be provi provided to everyone. But uh, then you're being hypocrite because you're not uh, actually, you, it's impossible to give it to everyone. And I will present you in my first argument. So moving on. Uh, they're saying, they're saying that any state uh, can be held responsible for that right. But now in status quo we have Germany who has decided, even though UN has decided it is a human right, that Germany has decided, oh, but it's not. 
So the Germany has decided, the member of the United Nations has decided as a member that water is not a human right in that area. And that is, be, that is uh, the way, not she, where, where is the hypocrisy uh, if the member of UN does not uh, follow uh, the principles of that organization? No, thank you. Another thing is, uh, they, uh, they are saying that, the, uh, that it will be taken some measures to provide water to everyone. But we ask what measures? Which measures will be taken? They say that everything, that water will be free to everyone. But water is something that it's a natural resource. And we, and in the status quo, we have a big problem with water. We have a problem because there is not enough water on the, there is not enough water to distribute it to everyone. We have a problem where th when billion of people today don't have water and how actually by f giving it free you're going to distribute it to everyone and uh, being no thank you and because it is a resource if we give it to free it means that we can uh, play along with the water whatever we wish to do but water is a uh, something that um, if then then we'll we, then we will get out of water we will have so much so uh, little so so little water that we can we wouldn't be able no thank you we will not be able to this uh, to uh, even provide uh, for half of the humanity uh, water supplies no thank you another thing why it cannot be free because it is a way that um, that the that organization has to uphold uh, its systems. For instance, if you have water company that uh, that is producing, you have to have the employees there. You have to have person who are taking care of it. it it's also a part that has to be taken care of that water. So there again, it cannot be free. Uh, so another thing is, uh, they're saying to us that water is a vital to life, and it is we. We agree that water is so vital, but what the thing is that if we are uh, saying that something is human right, we have to, um, that we, it is uh, hi very hypocrite because we know that we cannot uh, divert it to everyone. Because we know that uh, none of us can take actually, uh, that we cannot uh, distribute it towards people who actually need water. Another thing, no thank you, uh, and another thing is uh, that uh, so they, they were saying that cannot be privatized, okay, maybe we can agree on that, that it should be a state's job, but not definitely free, because it needs upholdment of the system. To, so, uh, moving on uh, to my uh, first argument, which is hypocrisy, and uh, it is actually a s on some parts in direct clash with what actually the, the, the side of uh, proposition was saying. So we are giving the water as human right just to appeal to something. We are just saying something. We are not actually doing something because it, the side of proposition has to show us how actually will every single person get the water and how do we have enough resources to provide water for, no thank you, we can, uh, to provide, ev to provide wat water for everybody else. Another thing is that um, we have to uh, see that um, UN is making just a PR, it's just making a political statement that it is a human right. But if we cannot maintain that human right, if we cannot actually, no thank you, if we say that human right is something that must be distributed, then it has to be that. And not saying, okay, it is a human right, but we are not going to do anything to uphold that. And that is a big problem. That is a problem in that. And that is, the rights are then just privilege extended, but they do not have the real essence in its sphere. They're only just said, but they're not implemented in the policies that are gaining. Another thing, no thank you. Uh, by accepting a value also means accepting the duty to uphold it, as I've already said. And the general uh, uh, population are providing this. Uh, and otherwise it's only empty rhetoric to say it is a human right. But if we are saying something is human right, then we have to put it in a real life situation and we have to maintain, we have to uphold that system. And that is when the things start to become human rights. Not only empty rhetoric, but showing to every person, okay, we can do that. And they are not showing us how will they do that. So that is the problem of the side of proposition today. Another thing is, politicians are trying to this in the co uh, context of formalizing the right to drinking water, but it's not all connected. It is just a political tool. It's 
empty rhetoric is something they're saying, but it actually doesn't provide yeah. substance in uh, in a moment. Doesn't provide substance in its matter. Yes. How can a human right be a political thing? How can a human right be a PR? It is a PR, and you know why? It is because they know they cannot distribute that water to everyone. They're just saying, okay, it is a human right. But actually, no, thank you. But actually, if you're saying something is human right, you have to make sure that it is obeyed and it must be provided to every single person. And they are not doing that. The side of proposition isn't doing that today in the system. So they're doing it only to get political points. Uh, so uh, that is the status. And as I've already said, the Germany, if it has been declined as the human right by UN, has decided, oh no, it's not human right because we want maybe to privatize companies. What is that? In, uh, where, is, where is that? And better awareness uh, that water isn't there. We have to acknowledge the fact that water is something that we don't have in so, so much um, quantity. It's something that is, res uh, that is a substantial amount people don't get it because there isn't actually enough water and to giving it free, we will very soon, very soon, we will not have water and we will have so many, so uh, little water that we could not uphold the right of that water. And that is the problem of the side of proposition. And for all these reasons, I beg you to uh, oppose this motion. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what is the problem today? Why are we debating about whether or not water should be a human right? The thing is, people do not have enough water to drink. That's what we are trying to change. We are trying to give people a mean of living, of giving them water, which is essential to life, a right to live. Now, in Africa, we see that there are communities that do not have enough water. There, are pover there is poverty and there is uh, people that cannot get access to this water. There are problems in this world that makes water uh, a limited resource. For example, we have pollution, we have um, global warming, we have overpopulation, we have wars, we have all of these things that influence our resources of water. What we're trying to do today is take the benefits out of the existing resources and giving it to people. We want to make the best out of the water that we do have and give, uh, give it a, a useful um, purpose, such as making it available for people that cannot drink this water. Um, in my speech today, I'm going to do some rebuttal, and then I'm going to develop my own argument, which is about why is the state responsibility, no thank you, to provide its citizens with this water. Um, it has been said by the opposition that there isn't enough water in this world, and that it, we just simply don't have enough to give it to people that need to drink it. Now, what I'm asking the opposition is, what do they want to do? Let people die of thirst because they want to conserve this existing water? We believe that the life of the citizens is the most important thing. We as society value the life of the citizens, so because we have little water, we should make the best out of it and give it for people to drink, because what else do we want to do with this water. The basic human thing here is to let them live, so give them water to, uh, to actually achieve this. No, thank you. Uh, they, they said that we don't, have, we don't have a model, that water can actually cannot be distributed to everyone. Well, we say that, yes, it can be distributed to everyone. Just like we have in Europe, people have access to water because it is distributed. We, we have to make the government be able to give these people water because it can be done. It can be done because we can get a water that falls from the sky like we all know it and make it drinkable. We can make it drinkable and make it available to people. The fact that, no thank you, the fact that the motion is not really practical does not stand because water actually can be, ab be available to people if we have the means of making it drinkable. No, thank you. Their first argument was about the fact that we are hypocrite, that the fact is we are, it's just a PR thing, and after all, Germany it says that it's not a human right. Well, we are not for Germany in this debate. We think that Germany is wrong, and we think that water is indeed a human right. And we can't really see how water can be a political scheme that the United Nations have come up with just to fool us all. We believe that the United Nations actually care about their citizens, and water actually cannot be considered a political scheme and a PR thing, because what, what does actually water do for any of these political parties or political people involved in this nation. Um, 
they have said, no, thank you, that is not implemented and we're just, you know, fooling around with everybody and we're not doing anything. But we are doing anything. There are certain countries in this world that have water. So we see that it is possible to make it a human right. It is possible to have access to water. What we're trying to make it is a universal right, a right that everybody has access to because there are people in Africa, like I've said, there are people in remote areas that are not so privileged as we are here. So what we're saying is, is because we have this exact examples of places in which water is available, no thank you, it can be implemented in other places as well. Um, they say that, you know, human rights are uh, violated and, you know, like they say it's just a hypocrite because we violate human rights. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you violate a human right, you will be held uh, responsible for it. There is uh, a punishment for violating a human right. If I'm violating your right to live and I murder you, I will be sued for it. So we believe that if we, not, if we don't yeah, respect don't. this human right, no thank you, there will be consequences. And their argument that we will not respect this human right doesn't, is not really relevant for this debate because what we're trying to do is change the actual situation, make it not violated, make it a human right which will be respected in, uh, in all situations. Now, my colleague Tudor, no thank you, has presented you with, first, uh, with uh, a few arguments, such as the fact that it's vital for life. We cannot talk about the right to live if you don't have the means to live your life, which is water. And they haven't really tackled this argument with every, anything, because my colleague Tudor has shown you that without water you cannot really live. So this right of uh, having water and drinking it is actually as vital as having the right to live, because they are dependent on each other. Um, our second argument was the fact that it is, a co it is a common good. We all have water. It's our own good that is shared between all of these people around the world. So what Tudor was uh, trying to explain was the fact that we all have to make the best out of this water because it's available to everybody and because we all should have uh, the right to drink it because it's uh, an universal and available good. The third argument, which uh, again was not tackled good enough, is the fact that it's a natural resource. So what does that mean? This means that the nature is giving you this resource. It means that we, because we live in a world where we have access to this resource, should be able to make the best out of it, should be able to turn it into drinkable water, no thank you, instead of, um, instead of letting it uh, there without having proper access to it. Now, our first argument was about the disadvantages, the disadvantages of not having a human right. And we, uh, Tudor has shown you that if water is privatized, if there are companies that are trying to make this water available, the prices will rise. And the problem is that the, the people that we're referring to in these motions is the people that do not have enough money to drink water. My colleague Tudor has given you examples of people living in Africa, two, two thirds actually of the people that need water live on less than $2 per day. What does this mean? No thank you. It means that they don't have enough money to buy water. So what it needs to be, it, so they cannot get the water from, from private companies that provide the water because companies, if they invest in making water available, they will want profit. They will get something out of it. And these people cannot really provide them with the prices on water because they are not, no thank you, because they don't have enough incomes. So what we're saying is because it's vital to life, because it's a natural resource, and because it's a common good, it should be free. It should be available, no thank you, it should be available to people that uh, do not have the financial resources because like we've said in the definition the human rights does not depend on the financial situation a human right does not depend on anything but the fact that you are human so even though these people do not have the uh, financial means to buy water they are entitled to drink it now my ar argument no thank you is about um, accountability who will be responsible if these people do not get water and what we're saying is that if these people do not get water the state is the one who will be responsible because the state's duty in the society is to provide its citizens to, the, to all of the means they have to live because the state's uh, uh, duty here the moral duty is to take care of its citizens and a way to take care of your citizens and provide them with the basic need of water so that they can live is to make it available to them is to make it free so they can drink it and enjoy it. So from this regard, because we have proven you that it is a vital to life, it is a natural resource, and it's a common good, and we should make the best out of the existing resources instead of following their example of just, you know, just letting it be there without really doing anything with the water that we have, I beg you to propose. Thank you. Universality 
equality, the common good, and all the other big, lovely words that we have heard from the side proposition today. What the side proposition does not understand with these big, lovely words is that big, lovely words require something behind them, require certain understanding of political aspects, of economical aspects, and certain understanding of employment of this policy in the real world. As a second speaker of the, of the opposition, I'm going to show you how they have failed to understand the economical aspect, failed to understand the way the UN employs its policies, failed to understand the political aspect of making this a human right, and have completely decided to talk about excellent ideals and big words but have achieved absolutely nothing. Afterwards, I will talk shortly about their short argument on accountability, and, therefore, and then I will talk about practical implications of making water a human right. Firstly, what they have told us from the beginning beginning is that to make something a human right it needs to be universal and it needs to be equally available to everyone water is not equally available to everyone and will not be equally available to everyone if it's privatized. It will be equally available to everyone when it's privatized in countries that have developed economical systems because the UN has programs to distribute water to people when there is no water. The UN does not charge starving Africans for water. It is free. However, because of other problems, problems of distribution, political problems, totalitarian regimes, matters of political interventionism, etc., etc., the fact that we're lacking in water resources, the fact that European countries are starting to lack in water resources, the fact that making water drinkable, for example, by desalinization, costs a lot even for European countries. That is why these people do not have water, because it's currently not feasible, and therefore the UN has seen fit to put this to the Declaration of Human Rights to make it seem as if they are doing something. But it is not feasible. No, thank you, sir. Because, uh, secondly, why... Would putting this into the Declaration of Human Rights imply privatization? And how will the UN force countries to privatize their water when the UN cannot even force countries in Africa or, or certain countries in the other parts of the world to uphold the most basic rights their people have? Because the UN is so powerful that all countries in Africa definitely uphold their people's right to work, their people's right to equal conditions, their people's right to life. However, the UN is most definitely going to make these countries uphold the right to water. How does the UN have the right to do this when, on the other hand, Germany, okay, they signed a declaration to make water a human right, but at the same time, they make access to water not a human right, and they have very elegantly gone around the fact that people should have water. No, thank you. So the UN has no power to force these nations to implement these policies, and the punitive measures they have mentioned, they have never defined them, not at a single point in this debate. The problem is not economical, the problem is of a much bigger scale, and this implies that making water human right is a political tool because the United Nations does not have the means to make water accessible to everyone and simply because it does not have the means it has seen fit to put this into the declaration to appeal to mere words on paper and to say, okay, water is a human right, but saying that something is a human right without showing exact measures, without showing how you're going to force people to do this, is hypocrisy, is waving with ideals, saying that something should be, but is not, because when you accept the obligation that something is a human right, you also accept the obligation to do everything you can to ensure that this is going to be universal for everyone. They have not shown us how this implies privatizing, they have not shown us how this is going to solve problems in nations that do not even have established markets, and they have not shown us how the UN is going to actually employ this in real life. Secondly, uh, from an economical aspect, water cannot be privatized. Water is not a purely natural resource. Because today, to have drinking water, water needs maintenance. Water needs people to take care of that maintenance. It needs extreme technology. To make it free is to damage economical systems of European countries that have water and not affecting, Af not affecting the other countries at all because they do not have economical systems. They do not have means of making this water drinkable at all. Now, thank you. It also costs a lot for European countries. The countries that don't have water don't even have the means to do this and therefore it's only economically damaging because water, no thank you, is a natural resource in the, same, in the same way as oil is a natural resource. You cannot call air a natural resource and compare it to water. Air does not require complete maintenance and you have a lot of abundance of air and you can go outside and you can breathe. You cannot quite do the same with water. Now, as for the duty of the state and the accountability and everything they have talked about, okay, the state is supposed to be accountable to do things and that's all cool. But what we're standing for here is that for something to be a human right, we need to be shown that these states that currently do not respect loads of human rights. The UN is powerless to do something about that. For a moment, we'll actually start doing that. Now, 
What we want to say with everything we have said up to now in this debate is the following. The United Nations does not have enough power to employ their policies. The United Nations does not have enough power to force other countries to do things. Therefore, the United Nations, in a moment, is making a desperate appeal to the awareness of the individual which depends solely on personal integrity and has no reason to succeed. Go ahead. So, the United Nations has no power over countries. It has no power of implementing things in countries. Then why do we have United Nations? Well, the United Nations has really shown its power currently in Africa through their implementation of the upholding of the right to live, of the right to work, of the right to equal work conditions, and every other right the UN is supposed to uphold, but is currently not upholding. No, thank you. And this leads us to our second aspect, which is the practical implications. The practical implications are the following. Firstly, from the aspect of the people, the people are not going to have more water. The people are going to have supposedly free water, which we do not know how will happen, by which agent it will happen, and how, and how this is going to affect anything in countries that are already not affected by UN policies and do not have developed economical systems to have an effect on the market. Okay. No, thank you. A practical implication of this is that it costs a lot of money for developed economical systems, let alone for undeveloped economical systems. Developed systems are already spending a lot of money and having a lot of expenses on maintaining water as being drinkable, and it's, it's going away very, very fast. And we cannot afford to do this from an economical aspect towards even the more developed countries. Also, no thank you, there's a problem of transporting this water, of distributing this water, of establishing peaceful relations in systems that need this water, which is a problem the UN is facing itself with today, the problem that UN still does not have a way to resolve. Privatizing water is not going to change political situations, not going to change problems of distribution, not going to change problems of non-existing markets. It's simply going to be a word on paper, maybe or maybe not, forcing European countries to, to make their water free and available to everyone, which means the following, that everyone will be able to get their water for free, and that means costs because of the maintenance required for water. For the undeveloped countries, it is not going to mean a single thing because their problem is not the fact that water is free or is not free. They don't have problems with costs. They have much bigger problems. Without showing us the implications and the implementations of this policy, the side proposition has not managed to show us anything. They have managed to show us they're going to force a bunch of countries to do something if they have the means, not directly affecting the countries most affected by this. They have shown us that they are desperately appealing to a word on paper because they have nothing else to do, because they are still failing at upholding the most basic rights of the world. And therefore, we beg you to oppose this motion for the sake of not waving at people's eyes with ideals that we cannot uphold. Thank you. Uh, so, basically, what the uh, opposition team has really been doing today is attacking our model without even listening to it properly. Because we have stated that we're not going to privatize water, we're going to make governments give it to people freely because we're going to make it a fundamental human right. And that's what a fundamental human right is. Something that's accessible for everybody, something people do not have to pay for. And we've already stated that uh, water is a basic human need because it... Uh, it uh, provides us with uh, life, it provides us with uh, another basic human uh, right, which is the right to life. So. Um what the opposition team has really been doing today uh, is saying that we have nothing to do and we should leave things as they are because we do not have enough water, because we do not have a way of providing it to people in Africa, for instance, and we should just let things like that. Well, um, making water a basic human right and forcing governments through the United Nations or through other means, forcing um, governments to make it a human right and provide it for everybody, every, citizens, every citizen in their country is the best shot we've got at solving any problem in the status quo at the moment. So what, really, what we're really trying to say today is that, okay, in 500 years, maybe the resources of water uh, aren't going to be to suffice the, um, uh, the need of the global population and this is not going to be a very feasible um, implementation of the motion. But as, uh, the, in, in our current times, well, we can see that there's enough water in this room to feed an entire, and to make an entire livage, uh, village <laughs> in Africa live for a, a day or even a week. So what we're trying to say is that there are, th the natural resource exists. It's a natural resource. We still have it. It's not, uh, it has not, um, it, it's, 
we still have it and we need to make it um we need to make it um um accessible to people in Africa, people who don't have it. And uh, our model clearly states, uh, and my, uh, the, pre the pre previous speakers of the government have clearly showed to you how we're going to uh, do this by making the government uh, provide water for their citizens and not and not allow companies to uh, privatize water to get water into their um, uh, hold and uh, make people pay for it. So. Um, the only uh, argument uh, which the uh, opposite team has used in order to attack our case is uh, the one about hypocrisy. How we're going to promise uh, uh, implementing this motion and how we're trying to convince you that implementing this motion is... Uh, is a, is a good thing, but we're not going to do this. Well, that's not true. We have the means of doing it uh, at, at the time. Governments governments can loan money from other countries. They can loan money from the um, into, uh, f from uh, the United Nations, and they can make it possible. They can have uh, water transported to villages, and uh, they're currently not not doing this because it is not clearly stipulated that uh, water is a basic human right. So what we're really trying to say is that um, by implementing this motion, we're going to uh, uh, get things moving uh, when it comes to uh, the African continent, when it comes to countries that don't have uh, enough water, uh, d that at present time have villages who um, don't have enough water in order to keep their citizens living and so on. Another major clash in this debate has been the one about the nature of water and how it is a limited or something, uh, a limited resource or something we can really provide and we can um, really make possible for people to have in all over the world. And um, the, the, uh, the opposition team has based their case today on a supposition, on, on something that is not, cannot be proven uh, on the fact that we do not have enough water to feed the people in Africa. Well, that's not true. And through our model, we're going to make it possible. We're going to make it possible for governments to transport water, to maintain it uh, in their countries and uh, to keep people alive and uh, uh, it, uphold their basic human rights, uh, their most important human right, which is the right to, to life. So let's see what we have really brought in this debate. We have brought the consequences of uh, not implementing this motion, the disadvantages it will bring. Well, the, the, main, the main disadvantage, as, as my colleagues have stated, is that uh, water will, will become privatized because it's the only other um, solution we can um, we can come up with at the moment because there's no other way of making it possible for people in Africa to have water, drinking water every day, every week, and in order to stop all the people that are are, are dying from thirst at the moment. So uh, we have not seen an, uh, an opposition who has really provided another solution. All they're saying is we have nothing to do. We should we should leave things as they are. No, thank you. And. Um, uh, they haven't I even really paid attention to our model. We haven't said that we're going to privatize water. We, we've just said that we're going to make government uh, do, um, provide water for their uh, own countries. So um, another question. Uh, we have also showed to you why specific we, we need to make water specifically a human right. And we need to make it, we need to implement this motion because as uh, the opposite team has not understood, we're not talking about air because uh, as they've stated, air does not need maintenance, but water does. And that's why we need a law to implement this motion. We, we clearly need um, a regulation in order to make it a human right because it's not accessible for everybody and because we, didn't, we need a third party in this debate. And that party is the government. Uh, the government is the only institution, the only authority that can, at the moment, provide water for, the, for its citizens. And private companies are not a solution because these people do not have the money to pay for water from private companies. And because by not implementing this motion, there's no real opportunity from the opposition team. They're saying we should do nothing. But really, what really happens is that um, the only uh, viable op opportunity is privatizing water. And if water becomes a private good and it will belong to companies, this will make it even harder for people in Africa, for, for people in poor countries to provide their people, uh, pr to provide their uh, their villages, their countries with uh, water, to, with drinking water, and this is not going to solve anything. So. Um, we have three, uh, four major points uh, uh, through which we showed you that water is a basic human right, and none of these have really been tackled by the opposite team. All, they've, all, the, all they're saying is that uh, suppo supposedly there's no, uh, not enough water in order to implement this motion, and this at the present time is not true. So we, we've 
shown to you how water is vital for, for life on Earth. So uh, by m implementing this motion, we're just uh, adding something to the uh, to the fundamental uh, human right, which is the right to life. Uh, our second point uh, refers to the fact that this, it is a natural resource, so uh, it cannot be owned by a private uh, individual or a private company. Uh, and our third point uh, referred to the fact that it is a common good and it should not be privatized. And as I have showed, showed you through my speech today, the only other alternative that exists um, in today's world is privatizing water because uh, there's no other way of, do, um, of uh, changing the status quo and of making it better for people in Africa and people who don't, don't have access to drinking water to survive and to, have, to make me tend. So, uh, because uh, the opposite team has not showed to us today uh, if, there's really a, if there's another real solution and all they're saying is we should do nothing because we can't do anything and that's not uh, true because they haven't tackle, really tackled our arguments and because they haven't really uh, told us why uh, privatizing, uh, for instance, privatizing water uh, is better than uh, making governments provide it for people. And we've showed you that how that is really wrong through our uh, fifth argument, which was presented by my colleague Irina, who has already stated that the governments are the only one who can be held responsible for um, uh, implementing this motion. We beg of you to propose. Thank you. What the PSAT proposition today has done and has been trying to do is wave ideals in front of your face. And the side opposition has a tough, tough role here because everybody likes ideals and everybody likes utopia and everybody likes a world where all the people get, get water, get food, live and so on. But unfortunately, this is not the world we are currently living in and this is not a world when it comes to water that we can live in. And this is something that we should have peace with because the side opposition today proved that what they wanted to do and what they tried to do is wrong and not possible. I will show this through, throughout my speech. So the first mistake that pro proposition side has done is that the motion is not the water should be pro privatized but whether it should be a human right. Why is it a false binary to say that oh, if we don't make it a right it will be pri privatized? That is false. Because we also have like state companies that could distribute water and they haven't even touched that. So why is it that it must, must happen that if water is not a human right, it is pri privatized? This is something that we have been questioning the whole debate and haven't got an answer to the whole debate. So the, ba the main question is in this debate, how will, we, will, how will we get more water and how will, be less, how, will we there be, how will there be less thirsty people? And this is unfortunately on the side of opposition. How is that? We have proved that water is not a natural, na just a national, nat natural resource that you like go to a, a river or something and drink water and it's okay. Water needs to be maintained. Water needs to be controlled and there need to be people who control this, this water. And the main problem is, which was exactly actually our s second argument that they have completely ignored, is that you have like cost for the, those maintenance. You have cost for making it drinkable, no thank you. You have the cost for paying those people who make it drinkable and so on. And the poor states, the poor states of Africa who have no money, who have totalitarian regimes, who have the, the corruption and so on, would have to pay those costs by themselves, even though they are poor, even though they cannot afford anything other, they would even now have to pay the costs for those maintenance of, of uh, water because by their policy, water is now free. So the state has absolutely no benefits from distributing that water and still has to pay, pay a large amount of money to get water to the people. And water is missing. We have also stated that throughout the whole debate. Water is a missing resource. It is not building up. It is not magically appearing in the world. No, thank you. We have a statistic that we have try, trying to ask the proposition to tell us. And the statistic is that drinkable water on Earth is only 0.01%. No, thank you. With 0.01%, uh, you can't really play games. And you can't really risk and try to do something and then fail. This is why this is an important question. And what we have stated through our speeches is that this whole policy, by making it a human right, is just a propaganda. 
Because by their definition, human right is something that needs to be and must be provided to everyone. By their policy, it cannot be provided uh, uh, to anyone. By any kind of policy, it cannot be provided to anyone because there is simply not enough water. And if you know, thank you, if you want to create water, like desalinization, then it costs even more money. And if those countries are poor, as they have stated throughout the whole debate, then how can they maintain that water? How can they bring water to the people in a moment if there is A, no water, B, no money, C, no process, D, no technology? Please. Get a credit. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, to summarize, oh, to, to emphasize what is important in this debate is to realize who wins by how many people actually get the water. I know it's the side opposition is kind of the something that nobody wants to hear because nobody wants to hear that we have to pay for water, that we have to pay for something that, yes, is vital to our life, but this is the reality we are living in. This is how the things work because we've made a world where nothing is free and now we have to deal with it, but not b like ignoring the system, not by ignoring the consequences and the uh, policies of our system, but we're fighting against against it in another, in, another, in another way. Just to make it a propaganda and to declare the biggest right of all to the right of water is nothing. Because if you don't have actions behind it, you, there are just empty words. And empty words here are actually damaging. Because what did you do? What did you do to those people? You declared something a human right, something that needs to be accessible to anyone, and you have the right to demand it. But if you live in a big country, in a, in a rich country, then you get the water. And what if you don't live in a, a big country? What if you live in a poor country? Then you have the right to water, but nobody to, to, to demand it from, because their authority is government. Let's not forget that. This is the government's business to do. The government, the same government in most of the poor countries who is uh, corruption, who has corruption, who doesn't work, who steals, who is mostly militarian and mostly uh, suppresses their own people. This is the government that should give them water for free. Are we, are we seriously being serious here? Are you really saying that government who's terrorizing their people just because you said, ha ha ha, it's a human water, it's a human right, they will start doing that. We have stated this throughout the whole debate. This is not possible to happen. This is why this motion should be opposed. Because even though this is a high ideal, and this is something that we all want to cherish, and this is something that we all want to succeed in life, it is unfortunately not possible. To summarize the whole debate and to summarize my speech once again. First of all, the, the proposition side kind of misinterpreted the motion because it's not that water should be privatized. And if it's a, a binary, that if there is no human right, water should be privatized, I would like to hear why. I would like to hear why no, no state company could buy that water and distribute it. Why is it a, just a bad company that will uh, suppress and uh, suppress people and make their lives even more hell than they are now? The second of all, even though they are all around going with their ideals and what they should do and how they should have and all of that, it is unfortunately not possible. In any model, this is not possible because there is not enough water. And if you want to uh, have water technology and produce water where there is no water, then you need money. Unfortunately, hello to capitalism, we need money. And if you don't have the money, unfortunately in this world, you're not going to get water. I'm sorry, this is the cruel truth, but they cannot just tell you something nice and expect you to believe it because, ladies and gentlemen, this is not how we think. And this is, not that, uh, and this is one of the reasons why you should oppose this motion. The other reason is because the proposition side has neglected our attacks, has neglected the, pro the, the possibility to implement this policy, and this lies that they have been telling is another and the biggest important and the most important important reasons why you should oppose this motion thank you although we all want to hear about how we have rights and how these rights are universal unfortunately in most cases they are not and therefore when you talk about making a right universal about appealing to a right as high as the right to water, since we do agree that water is something so vital for life, then you need to know 
what are the implications of what you're stating? What are the implications of your policy? And how is it going to affect anything? Firstly, they have failed to provide us with the answer. Why should the United Nations putting this into their declaration imply that every state is going to make water free? How does this necessarily imply that every single state, especially corrupt governments in Africa or other places that don't have water and are existentially endangered, are going to put this into their legal system? Especially when we know that these are nations that even today oppress their people, that are even today corrupt, that even today prevent the distribution of water despite the US programs and despite a unified front by the United Nations to do this. But to expect that they will do so individually is even more utopian. We do not know how they will do this. We do not know how they will solve these problems, but they most definitely will. What they are affecting is the economical aspect of the more developed countries. Because every single na uh, so-called natural resource that needs ma maintenance as water needs to cost a certain amount of money. Because it costs a lot to keep up with the fact that we have less and less and less water. The processes for making undrinkable water drinkable are extremely costly even for developed countries. How they will distribute this water to undeveloped countries, how undeveloped countries are going to pay for this, or the United Nations is going to pay for this, we have not heard. And finally, there is a false binary. Either we privatize water or it's completely free. Firstly, this is a false binary, because there are state companies that own and sell water. Secondly, this is not what the motion is about. This is about whether or not we're going to make water a human right and by means of making it a human right, also make it accessible to everyone. Because making something a human right means you've taken upon yourself the obligation to make it accessible to everyone. Not showing us how you're going to do this. Debating on a completely different motion and trying to tell us that we are the bad side, we are the bad side opposition, who do not want rights, who do not want the common good, we want, the, we want people to die and be thirsty, no we do not, but we simply have to accept the reality that this government cannot solve the problem that we have, we are not claiming that we want people to die, we are claiming that people are going to die if we implement the policy of the government, which is going to create huge economical problems without absolutely any realistic implications on the real world. It is a desperate appeal to something which is on paper, an appeal to people to maybe realize it is a right but it does not change anything. We have a, a huge amount of rights that are not respected today. We have a huge problem with the fact that they are not respected. We do not know how to make them respected and we add another right, yet another ideal that we supposedly promise everyone but do not know how to uphold. Not knowing how to uphold something and you're saying you're going to do it, is lying. And you know it is. And it is hypocritical to lie in such a way about something that is so huge as the right to something that is so vital, to promise it to everyone and to know you cannot do it. And in the name of stopping such policies, of stopping governments who cannot solve their problems but claim they can, we beg you to oppose this motion. Thank you. The opposition today has accused us of having ideals. Now, we plead guilty of having ideals. We plead guilty of having an actual vision of what needs to be done. We would like to have a clear image of what needs to be changed and not just sitting back like the opposition has, said, has done and, and saying, well, there's nothing that can be done. We'll just let, people, let these people die. Because what they have done is this, they talked about procedural details, but they haven't provided any other alternative to this uh, to this motion. They have said, we don't want let to let people die, but we don't know how to not let them die. We will just sit back and say, well, we don't want them to die, but there's nothing we can do about it. Now, we have provided you with the basic uh, moral principles that need to be applied in this motion in order to have a clear image of why human uh, rights include the right of drinking water. They have talked about details such as violating the rights afterwards. Well, how about making it a human right and seeing if, everybody, if anybody dares to uh, violate it afterwards? How about implementing the motion, making it a human right, and then taking a risk of violating afterwards? Because we we 
all know if they are going to violate the, the, the right, so why just don't make it a right now and see if they are going to violate it afterwards. They have talked about this nice concept of politician and how they have their own interests. They haven't, proof, they haven't proved why politicians are directly linked to human rights, how politicians are influenced by people drinking water in Africa, and they haven't given us any alternative as to why people in Africa need to have a, a mean of drinking this water. They have talked about, they are very concerned about the economy. I have uh, raised and given a POI saying that the government can actually <coughs> take measures, get a credit, and provide these people with water. To which they replied, okay. Which we say that actually this is a mean of, of doing it, of getting a credit, of get, actually getting the money necessary to make it a human right. We value life more than we value money, ladies and gentlemen. We value these people's rights of living, of having a, a mean of drinking water, of drinking water more than we value uh, the economical details, which, like my colleagues have proven you, can be solved. Now, what have uh, we talked about today? We've talked about moral principles and our duty. The opposition has just neglected the higher uh, implication of this motion and just stick to the procedural details that have not made any sense in this motion because they are not directly uh, linked to the human rights. And because we have proven you that because it's a natural resource, because it provides people with a right to live, because it's a common good that all people should have access to, and because we have a considerable problem in Africa where these people cannot physically get access to water, it should be a human right. And because the opposition has failed to prove an alternative because they have stated that they do not want these people not to drink water, they haven't given us any example as to why, uh, an, an example as how we can make these people actually get access to water. They have just rejected our model, saying that it will be violated, it will not be practical, and nothing else can be done about it. So because of all of these reasons, because we've talked about concrete advantages of making it drinkable, because we've, we've talked about the moral duty of, of doing so, because we've talked about what water actually is and who should have access to water, I beg you to propose. Thank you.